I'm going to talk about when people can't move forward. You see, in life, you often see people who keep on talking about what they've been through. And we often label such people as people living in the past. We often tell such people, get over it. You see, that's a wrong thing to do because even God himself, you know, will not erase the past. Yes, the Lord has put away our sins as far as the east is from the west. However, we, we, will, we that are born again will be monuments of God's grace and God's glory. And a monument is a installation of victory. So if you erase the battle, then you don't have a victory. The Lord Jesus Christ will in all eternity be referred as the, the Lamb that sits on the throne, the Lamb that was slain. So Calvary, his crucifixion, that he carried all our sins, you see, that will not be forgotten. So God will use the past for his glory. So God does not command us to just forget about the past to pretend as if it doesn't exist. Okay, he wants us to give it all over to him. But then that's not what I'm going to talk about in this audio clip. Listen. There are people walking this earth who cannot move on. Why can't they move on? It's not because of something that happened to them in the past, something traumatic. We all go through traumatic experiences from time to time. Some more severe than others, but we all do during this lifetime. Both saved and unsaved people. What I want to point out in this video is that human beings that are self-centered, they are cursed with a curse by Satan to remain in the past. What do I mean by that? People that are self-centered, they are living in a mental, emotional prison. They don't want to look outside of their comfort zone. They don't want to consider other points of views. They don't want to consider other possibilities. You see, let me give an example how this works. Let's say, you know, you have, you, you are 40 years old and, or let me say you're 20 or 40 years old. I don't care what your age is. And you get a report from the doctor that you have cancer. And that the cancer is, you know, in a late stage. So they need to do chem chemotherapy or else you're finished. Well, by doing chemotherapy, you will become unfruitful. You will lose all your hair and you will have lifelong damage. It's either that, living with lifelong damage or you will die. However, if you're self-centered, you see, and you don't want to hear about anything else and you only want to hold on to the information you already received, then you will do chemotherapy. chemotherapy. Because people that are self-centered, they don't want to hear that they are being lied to. There are far more better ways to treat cancer besides chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is very dangerous and there are more beneficial and cheaper methods to heal cancer. But those things aren't mainstream. You have to be willingly to let go of your self-centeredness to receive such information. People that aren't willingly to admit that they are wrong they will not receive, uh, receive other points of view because then they have to acknowledge their pride and the fact that they are vulnerable. So being self-centered, as in the example given of, you know, of chemotherapy, it can cost you lifelong damage that cannot be repaired unless you repent to Christ. So why do I use the example of chemotherapy? Just, just to highlight this, and there are other ways to show it also. For example, the school system. Many have grown up with the idea that the only way to become successful and achieve a good life is through school. First of all, nowhere in the Bible is it ever written or recorded that we have to achieve a blessed life. The blessings are a result of you being saved through Christ. So there's nothing you do to achieve it. But we've been lied to, and those that have, been, that have been lied to are using the same lies to manipulate others. So the victims now also become perpetrators in the system. So when the light is being shed on a circumstance that 
though no, school is not the way, Jesus is the way, then people become offended, they want to hear it. So because they choose to become self-centered, they are doomed to live with curses and the consequences of those curses. You see? So, listen. When you follow Christ Jesus, when you're born again, listen, the Lord God will remove some people from your life. And it will not always be your enemies. Okay? Often, God will remove people from your life. Sometimes, even born again people, God will remove from your life because those people don't want to move on. They won't hold on to the information they received in the past. They don't want to let go of those old information. It's not the pain and the hurt from the past they don't want to let go of. It's the false information, the false. See, it's the idols from the past they don't want to let go. So there will, such people may not be, you know, ill, Ill will towards you. Some, some are even born again, but they still need to be delivered. It doesn't matter. Anyone that's living in the past because they don't want to let go of their self-centeredness, each of them are a danger to you. It, they may be people that have the best intentions for you. That, like I said, some are even born again. But because they don't want to grow, they are fighting their growth, God will remove them from you. God will remove people from you who, who carry baggage from past information so that you are free to enjoy the present and his provision. Because the human beings that are self-centered, I'll repeat, they are doomed. In, in this life, if they are born again, then it's only for this life. If they are not born again, it's forever. Anyway, self-centered people are, are doomed by the curse of Satan to hold on unto the past. Just like Satan himself is holding on unto his past. Okay? So, look, there will be people that are kind to you. There will be lovely people in your life that will be cut off by God. And sometimes you don't know, you don't understand what's going on. You will be thinking, oh, I'm under attack. Demons are attacking me. I'm losing good friendship. I'm losing good relationships. No, you're not. God knows what he's doing. He is removing all people from you who will trap you in the present. Because remember, the present will not last forever. So those that are living in the past, they don't want to let go of their, of the, the, the false image they have of themselves. They won't let go, let go of their ego. You're free, and God wants you to be free to enjoy His provision daily, all the days of your life. God doesn't store all the good things for you. For the afterlife, He wants you to have the good things today also. And human beings that live in the past, they are not a part of the covenant that God has for you. So, even if someone is a born-again believer, when they are hanging on to past information, they are no good to you. And when someone is an unbeliever, you know, you have to be careful with them. Because they might carry demons with them. So I come to repeat this. The Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God will remove people from your life who are holding on to past information. You see? Because those people that are holding on to past information will either, you know, they will either stress you out and burden you with criticism and negative attention or they will talk bad about you and give unnecessary information to your enemies okay and they will pollute you they will bring trouble and negativity in your present so for those that are going through their deliverance process those that are moving forward when people begin to fall out of your life, let them fall off. Even if they were people that were friendly towards you, that even if they were people that that were beneficial to you, they're not beneficial anymore. The Lord God only tolerated them in your life for your good. Now their use in your life is over. If they repented unto God, they would have free access to your life, but because they don't want to move on, they are no good to you anymore. So let them leave. You see, 
Today is the 20th of December 2014. 2015 is coming. It's a whole new year. And I pray and I declare in the name of Jesus, good stuff is coming for you. Come here. And it, let's say if you, I don't know, if you listen to this message in the far future, like in 2020 or I don't know, I don't care on which date you listen to this video, there are good things coming your way. Just trust the Lord Jesus Christ and let people go that the Lord cuts off from you. Drop them like it's hot. I mean it. Drop them like it's hot. Let them go. The Lord is better for you. Okay. This is it for now. And I'm going to encourage you. Oh, I'm encourage you one more time. When the Lord God removes people from your life, it may be people who were beneficial to you, they are not beneficial to you anymore. They will only become a curse unto you because they are living in a curse. They will only pollute you and bring harm to your life if they keep on being in your life. So it doesn't matter how God removes them from them, let them leave. God has far better things for you. And I'll give an example from the Bible for you. King David, before he was king, he was just David. He was a shepherd boy, 17 years old, rejected by his father and his, and his family members because his mother was a prostitute. Okay, so David was anointed unto king by the prophet Samuel. David was a prophet himself. He just didn't do it yet. After his anointing, he defeated Goliath. You see, Saul began to persecute him 13 years long. Then Saul died with his sons and David was crowned king over Judah. And after eight years, he was recognized as king throughout the whole of Israel. Never do you read of David's siblings or nephews defending him from Saul. Never do you read about his siblings in a positive way towards David. Never. And once David became a king, you never read anything of them again in history. They all stayed away from David. They didn't want to let go of their past information about David. Yes, David was a shepherd boy. Yes, David, you know, was emotionally weak. Yes, David had his serious issues. He kept having, having them. Yet they didn't want to accept that the Lord has anointed David as a prophet and as a king. They didn't want to let go of their past information about David. So that's why the Lord had cut them off from David's life. You see? Because if they were to remain in David's life, they would have polluted David's reign over Israel. They would have polluted all the lives of the people, new people David would have in his life. You see? Abigail, who was one of the wives of King David, she, she mocked King David because David didn't act in a royal manner. David didn't bother with it. David just went on with his life. David also married several other wives. Abigail remained barren. She had no children. The curse that she had over her life prevented her from being fruitful. Her resentment of David was an expression of her unwillingness to let go of past information. Look, you're not responsible for whether people are saved or not. You're not. You're not responsible for whether people let go of the past or not. You move on. There are good things ahead of you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.